I'll introduce the guest of the honor for today. Aman and Harshita are the co-founders of Cogno AI, which recently got acquired by Exortal. Harshita graduated from IIT Kanpur, then worked for a year at Citibank, and then joined Aman in his journey of building Cogno. At Cogno, she looks at product and engineering. Please give a huge round of applause. On the other hand, Aman graduated from IIT Bombay doing his B.Tech in Computer Science and Engineering and looks at sale, sales, project management and customer success at Cogno. Aman is also an active angel investor in early stage startups. Please give a huge round of applause for him. Thank you. I'll quickly share my screen. Perfect. So uh, hello, everyone. So. Today we'll be discussing the topic about, about how to get a high paying job in AI and ML. Uh, first of all, just to set the expectations correctly, uh, this is going to be a this is going to be a boring lecture uh, in the sense that AI and ML engineers are paid paid far more than typical people working in IT services firms. So you have to travel that extra mile to be able to get a better paying job, and that extra mile is a little is a journey of a lot of hard work and effort. And it's very monotonous. So I'm setting the expectations upfront that please do not get overwhelmed seeing the amount of content or the amount of advice that you will see in this presentation. You should be able to choose uh, a lot of this on your own that what is relevant for you, what is not relevant for you, what are the things you already know and what are the things you already do not know. So with that, I'll show you the contents that I'm going to discuss. Uh, firstly, I'll briefly talk about the difference between AI and ML and why sort of machine learning is the more important aspect from a job perspective rather than being a generic uh, AI engineer. Secondly, I'll talk about some prerequisites and then I'll talk about a couple of courses on machine learning which might be relevant for you. And then I'll hand over to Harshita who will talk about practicing machine learning problems and interview preparation. So with that, let's get started. So firstly, the difference between AI and ML, this is important to understand because I've seen people talking about I, I'm an AI engineer vis-a-vis -vis I'm an ML engineer. Uh, I mean, it's important furthermore because when you apply for jobs, you should not end up applying for a hardware job thinking that you are applying for a software job, right? Uh, when it comes to artificial intelligence, it's basically an intelligent system that mimics human capabilities, which means a robot is an AI based system, but a physical robot is what I'm referring to. It's an artificial intelligence based system, but it's not a machine learning based system uh, at the at the larger level. Obviously, a robot also employs uh, capabilities of machine learning, uh, which is separate conversation. But see, AI is basically anything that mimics human. It, it need not be intelligent uh, in the sense that it can be a rule based system as well. Right. So I don't know if you guys know or not. Samsung has this popular uh, chat system called Bixby, which is the equivalent of Siri, Cortana, Alexa, uh, and Google Assistant, right? Bixby is fully written in a rule-based system without any machine learning. So, or rather without any sort of intelligence that we, we all understand or interpret as intelligence, right? It understands keywords and basis that keywords, it gives you response. There is no, uh, uh, I mean, the intelligence of the definition of intelligence that we all know, right? The cool intelligence, it doesn't have. It has all the raw intelligence that we know. So machine learning is a system that learns with data and improves with time, right? So, so basically what I'm trying to say in an AI, you can write down a sequence of steps to, to take a decision, which means key, let's say, uh, I mean, I'm sure all of you would have been taking some decisions to go to a party on a Friday night or to a dinner or to go out with friends or chill out, right? Basis on your mood. It's a sort of rule based system key. If I'm in a happy mood if, or if, I, if I'm in an excited mood, I'll probably go to a club. If I'm in a dull mood because the week was not great, I'll probably want to sit in a park. Right. So, I mean, this is a basic system, which is a rule based system. On the other hand, in machine learning, what happens is it learns from data. So a small child, when they are born, they they will they will touch everything which is like a bright object. For example, they'll go and touch a candle which is burning. And when they touch it, they realize that shit, this is not something that is to be touched. It is a hot object, right? So they learn with time that look, next time I don't have to touch a candle. Nobody told them that don't touch a candle. It is a hot object, but they learned it by themselves. So this is machine learning. On the other hand, if sort of they build a rule internally, or rather if, if newborns were programmed with a rule that says that 
when I, I mean as soon as they are born if they were programmed with a simple rule that says ki anything that is like yellow and looking like a candle don't touch it then that will be ai so ai ai comes pre deployed in some ways and machine learning while it it learns over time so machine learning is the one which is hot in the market and that's where the opportunity exists at least in the software sense of things right that's that's what uh, harshita and my ex expertise is in so we'll talk about that we'll not get into robotics part so now the pre i'll talk about some of the prerequisites of machine learning so i mean uh so uh, so just for my understanding what's the background of the audience are are people pursuing a, a what a computer science course is it like a bachelor's course is it a master's course can someone brief me on that so we are the students from bachelor's of computer applications bachelor's of science in information technology okay okay so so the first and foremost prerequisite is basically the basics of programming uh, python programming so uh, python is the preferred language for machine learning uh, it contains a lot of libraries and frameworks which are very uh, sort of handy right so so we'll get to the machine learning machine learning stuff i'm talking about the basics which you need to know right to be able to create a solution for a machine learning problem the first thing everybody should know is to be able to write a program so the basics like constants variables statements for loop while loop right these things are the basics of programming and i'm sure all of you would have gone through some sort of cs 101 kind of course so a lot of that will be covered and if you have not covered python programming language it is worth uh, spending some time learning python uh, there are some libraries which are very important which is numpy and scikit learn so so you can search for tutorials on google uh, for numpy library so numpy is basically all about dealing with large data sets large numbers right matrix multiplication addition of columns subtraction of columns right so so when you have a large data set so uh, by the way we define machine learning as uh, in in the in this slide we we discussed right it's an intelligent system that learns from data so the first and foremost thing is to understand data and to be able to process it and that's where numpy comes very handy next is scikit learn which is i mean this is a scikit learn and tensorflow are two of the most popular libraries for machine learning i uh, will come to that so but it's good to know some of these libraries basically they provide you ready made functions for ready made uh, libraries for machine learning algorithm implementation and lastly debugging so when you write we, we, when you will be writing a lot of code for machine learning problems obviously you need to be good at debugging to be able to find problems in your uh, code so so this is one course which i found very interesting uh, it's on udacity and it's a free course uh, so by the way i'll be sharing these slides so you will get all of these links Uh, so udacity's python programming course is quite good it covers all these basics which i mentioned and uh, it, it provides some sort of certification and degree and all of that you can ignore that you don't have to spend money on uh, uh, these courses uh, all of these courses are free if if anything is paid or if if any course is asking you money for a certification no need to pay money is what i would suggest so the second course is around probability and statistics Uh, again at least in 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 my college in a btech there is always a course in probability and statistics uh, i don't know how it is for bs it or for bca but it's important to understand some of these basic questions right in in class 11th and 12th i'm sure all of you would have gone through the probability uh, courses uh, so basically conditional probability mean median mode bayes theorem i it's a part of cbsc and icsc syllabus so i hope all of you would have covered that uh, if not please revise these topics so some topics which are which are typically not covered in class 11th and 12th are random variables which are uh, so by the way random variables is also covered but multivariate random variables is one topic which is usually not covered so 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 what so basically i'll tell you how machine learning works you so let's say there is a pattern in some data for example you have a data of uh, so let me let me think of an example I, so so handwritten digit recognition data right so you have a lot of data sets where you have an image of a handwritten single digit number and associated actual number so let's say something like a 9 and then it's mentioned that this is 9 now these handwritten digits can be collected from anywhere these could be from postcards these could be from written notebooks right your own notes so th there are data sets available online for handwritten digits so they contain images of single digits along with the label that what digit is this uh, which is verified by a human now what what happens is that to so so you get an image right image i'm sure you would you guys would understand images are represented as pixels so let's say you have a 100 pixel by 100 pixel image 
uh, which which represents a number nine. So it will have certain pixels which are black, and certain pixels which are white. Right? The, typically, that's how the screens, uh, smartphone screens or ma laptop screens work. Now, in 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 random in random variables, basically, what happens is this. So, so you map this entire image through a through a to a multi-dimensional space. Uh, so, some of this might be abstract, which I am discussing, and that's what you will cover as a part of actual machine learning course. But I'm trying to give a flavor of why probability and statistics is important, right? So, so you assume that you take an image as an input, right? Now, this image is a hundred cross hundred image, and let's say a pixel is colored one. Uh, let's it has a label one if it is black or it has a label zero if it is white right simple so that's how you can represent a digit nine right a 2d arrays you guys would have studied now you will have a function let's say a function called f now it takes this image as input right image is a 10 cross 10 matrix so it can be represented by a matrix of 100 variables right f of x where x is a 100 100 length matrix which is a 10 cross 10 image and it gives output as a digit which is whether the output is 9 8 1 0 whatever now this this whole function if you think about it it's a random variable right because it's taking something as an input and it's giving you output that what digit is this uh, in machine learning you are never sure that this is 9 or this is 8 uh, i'm sure some of you would be uh, would have seen a situation where your father has written a four and it looks like a nine. So you can take a guess that with high confidence, I can say this is a four, this is not a nine, and same for many other digits also, right? So essentially, you are not 100% confident that this is a four or a nine, which are two di digits which look similar, but you are 90% sure that this is a four. So the, the outcome which you are saying, which is which digit is this, you have a probability on that. Right? You're not sure what it is, but you are 90% sure. So, I mean, your surety is a random variable. It could be 80%, it could be 95%, it could be 50%, and that's what uh, multivariate random variables are about. And uh, this is covered very well in this one of the courses by MIT. So MIT is like world's number one university, as uh, all of you might already know. So this is a course on introduction to probability and statistics, and it covers all of these topics which I'm discussing. Uh, so. I mean, what, whatever I spoke, if you don't understand, that's absolutely fine. This course will help you cover many of these topics. And there is this excellent book called The Elements of Statistical Learning, uh, which is which is uh, very focused on probability and statistics. Do not try to cover this whole book end to end. The book contains a bunch of topics. Uh, maybe you can follow this course. And in this course, whatever things, so there is a syllabus tab, right? You can see whatever things which are relevant in this course, only those elements you can cover from the book. So, so, so this is a prerequisite too. I know it's a lot to ask, but machine learning is a has a, a job in machine learning also provides a lot of money, right? So you have to put in that extra effort. Third is linear algebra. So lot of linear algebra would be similar to what you would have done in class 11th and 12th: matrix multiplication, matrix addition, dot product, cross cross product, inversion of matrix. So linear algebra is relevant in machine learning because as as you just saw that we have a matrix of 10 cross 10 which represents an image. So these matrices, uh, when you impose a function on top of it and you get some output, all of this is linear algebra stuff, so you need to be good at that. Eigenvalues and eigenvector, I don't know if this is there in class 10th and 12th syllabus, but this is one topic uh, which is separately covered, which is required in many of the machine learning algorithms. I think there are algorithms like PCA uh, in machine learning which require these things. So this is another course. This is on Coursera. This is again a free course which you can enroll for uh, linear algebra. And this talks about the linear algebra aspects which are relevant for machine learning. And again, this is a free course. You don't have to pay for any certification. And there is a book called Erwin Kreising. Like I mentioned in the earlier course also, you can follow only the relevant portions of this book because you don't have to learn linear algebra as a whole. You have to learn only those concepts which are relevant for machine learning. Next is calculus. So this is the last prerequisite I'll talk about. So many of this you would have done, right? Functions, limit, continuity, differentiation, all of this you would have done in your uh, class 11th and 12th in CBSC and ICSC and state boards. Uh, some topics which is multivariate calculus, partial derivatives, chain rule you would have done for single variables, which is dy by dx, uh, d of like x into x1 into x2 car derivative. 
all of that you would have done so this chain rule is more from a perspective of multivariate calculus so let's say you have five variables 10 variables matrices like d by dx of a into b where a and b are matrices laplacian operator and basics of convex optimization again these things all there is another course mathematics for machine learning multivariate calculus uh, and you can take this course so this is also a free course and there's a book called thomas and finney uh, which is a fantastic book for calculus now so this with this we sort of complete our prerequisites portion i'll just revise uh, the first is basics of python programming it, now that is important because you should be able to write code to be able to solve problems of machine learning uh, second uh, prerequisite was probability and statistics third was linear algebra and fourth is calculus so if you have come this far which will take about two to three months in itself if you have not done it earlier uh, i think you are ready for machine learning and 80% of the work is done because 20% of machine learning 20% uh, of the components which we'll discuss now which is actual machine learning is just the application of these things which i mentioned statistics linear algebra python and calculus <coughs> so now i'll talk about another machine learning course which is supervised machine learning this is a famous course by professor andrew ng uh, this is on coursera and this course talks about all the basics of machine learning algorithms it starts off with linear regression takes you to deep learning neural networks convolutional neural networks embeddings vectors and a bunch of other stuff uh, support vector machine right so so this is a fantastic course uh, which you can complete so i'm telling you the sequence of roadmaps by the way in this in this class i mean it's too short of a discussion to be able to get into specifics right i, I can't teach uh, deep learning in this one small lecture uh, i am assuming that people who are sitting here are motivated enough to learn all of this thing so what i am doing is helping you build a roadmap and helping you suggest the right places from which you can learn some of these things this is one last course which is learn machine learning by building projects so once you've learned the basics once you've picked up the uh, core content of machine learning now it's time to put some projects on your resume right so harshita will talk about how to apply at companies and jobs and stuff but basically for preparation you need to be, you you should be able to sort of show some projects of machine learning on your resume so this course is excellent it talks about some of the things like stock market clustering cancer detection board games review credit card fraud detection and diabetes detection so some of i mean these four or five projects are there and the course will teach you how to apply machine learning algorithms on some of these data sets so you are solving a real world problem you are using programming language to solve that problem and building a project and putting that on your resume so this course is there from eduonix it's a paid course but i think it's pretty cheap some 500 600 rupees you guys can share among each other but the course is fantastic it it will take you through uh, all of these concepts and uh, the good thing is you will have resumes uh, projects to put on your resume so yeah i'll i'll now hand over to harshita who will talk about uh, uh, these aspects of uh, how to apply for a job and all thank you aman so i'll just share my screen now yeah, so Aman talked a lot about like from where to learn machine learning and the related concepts. So what I'll be talking about now is how do you prepare for interviews? How do you apply and a lot more things? OK, so the first thing that I'll talk about is practicing machine learning problems. So Kaggle is a very popular online community for all the ML enthusiasts, and there are a lot of challenging problems that you can solve on Kaggle. So like these problems, they are organized as competitions. So some competitions are time bound, like which means that they have a deadline associated with it. Uh, and some are like not having a deadline, like you can practice them like all along the way. So uh, like this is how the competitions are there in Kaggle. There are several companies who are actually putting up their uh, real time problems like that they're facing uh, right now, which are related to machine learning. So they're putting it up on Kaggle. They, uh, they are also associating prizes and all with these competitions so that if there's somebody who can just solve it and the top performers, they can actually uh, get these prizes and they also get an opportunity to interview with these companies for the machine learning engineer positions. So they, like a lot of companies do this, they open up uh, uh, these competitions and then they interview the top performers. So this is one of the ways how you can interview for such companies. And also like when you uh, solve problems on Kaggle, uh, on Kaggle, right? So you get a lot of uh, points and medals associated with those problems. And uh, uh, like these points and all, they help you like 
showcase like yourself on the leaderboard so like for example uh, for competitive coding uh, people do a lot of uh, uh, they practice a lot of problems on lead code uh, uh, code chef and a lot right so they have uh, uh, like ratings over there so similarly for ml enthusiasts you can actually pro uh, practice problems on kaggle and get points and all which you can showcase in your resume uh, if you're making one for applying for machine learning companies so uh, or Kaggle is a good resource uh, where you can practice. And also, if you say. Set. So there are a lot of data sets that are available on Kaggle, which you can actually pick up from there and use for your projects. And uh, yeah, so uh, Kaggle is a good resource. I would recommend everybody to just explore it once. Whoever is uh, uh, exploring the career in machine learning. Uh, next, I'll talk about machine learning interview preparation. OK, so uh, like many people think that machine learning uh, engineering interviews like they, they will just contain like questions around uh, machine learning, but that is generally not the case. So there are different type of questions. OK, uh, like uh, people may the companies may even ask you coding questions. They may ask you some case studies, system design, statistics questions like multiple things they can ask. So uh, in my further slides, I'll go through uh, five most common types of rounds that happen for uh, uh, machine learning engineer interviews. Again, uh, like these are the different types of rounds. They can actually uh, plan out these uh, rounds. It may happen that all these rounds uh, uh, are taken by the company. It may happen that just some of them are taken. Uh, right, or it may happen that some extra rounds are also taken. So it depends on the company, like what they are expecting out of the candidate. Uh, but in in my uh, like subsequent slides, I'll talk about the most common uh, these five type of uh, interviews, which is screening, coding, machine learning, case studies, and system design. Um, so the first type is screening. So screening is a basic uh, screening round. So this typically happens for every company, right? So this is a just an a casual kind of interview. Like this is just a conversation rather. Uh, nothing much technical is asked in this. Uh, like the company, the it, and it is taken by the hiring manager or the recruiter, right? So they may call you. It typically happens on phone. Uh, they might tell you like uh, about the job description, uh, what the company does, what's the problem statement that we are trying to solve, and uh, you may uh, tell them about your background, experience, uh, like what have you done previously in machine learning or whatever the job description is, right? Something related to that, you will tell about your background accordingly. Right, so this is just a general conversation. 15, 20 minutes is generally enough for this. Uh, typically happens on phone, and uh, sometimes it might happen that the recruiter or the hiring manager who is talking to you, right? So they may give you some assignment before, uh, like uh, going on to further rounds. So it may happen that they may give you some assignment which you have to solve, and basis that the further rounds may happen. It is very well possible because, especially in machine learning, like many people know a lot of theory, right? But uh, uh, putting that theory into practice is the most important thing, right? If you're able to put that theory into practice of solving problems and getting higher accuracy, accuracy, precision, and also that is the most important skill that the companies are looking for, right? So they may not to go directly to the interviews. They may ask you to solve a machine learning assignment or a coding assignment, like depending on what they are looking for. Uh, so that may happen. Uh, but this telephonic round is generally uh, a casual discussion. So. After that, we come to the next uh, uh, type of round, which is coding round. OK, so there are a lot of companies that actually ask uh, uh, the DS algo problems. OK, uh, like in, in one of the rounds, even for machine learning engineer interview. OK, so uh, like uh, again, I mean, there can be various reasons for this. Like one is generally uh, that the that the students, especially the freshers, right? They practice a lot of uh, um, data structures and algorithms in the college itself, right? So machine learning is something which is a very complex subject like people do learn it in college, but also uh, they learn a lot of it along the job as well, right? But if a company is say coming to hire students, right? Freshers, right? So the most uh, um, like the most safe bet is to actually uh, evaluate the students on what they have been already learning in college, right? So as to see that how much effort they have put in, how much clarity, of uh, thoughts and how skilled they are in, in what they have already learned, right? So a lot of companies, they ask uh, DS algo related questions, right? And uh, uh, they may actually ask you to solve some uh, questions. They may just ask you to write pseudo code or whatever, like depending on that, uh, on what like the 
the interviewer is asking right so over here i have uh, mentioned some resources of uh, uh, like where you can actually go and practice uh, the coding interviews there is one very popular book cracking the coding interview okay and there is also a website uh, uh, like by the same author so that link also i have provided in the slide that is a very very good source for practicing coding uh, the, for practicing related to coding interviews right you get a lot of so you get to solve a lot of questions in that so this is one time Here, uh, interview like there will be one round of machine learning, right? So, in this round, uh, people uh, generally assess your uh, knowledge on machine learning, okay? And depending on the type of problem uh, the company is solving and the type of uh, technology that they are using, right? They may ask you questions about like various aspects of machine learning, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, convolutional and neural networks. Uh, NLP, like m multiple aspects of it, right? So, uh, like questions will be asked around that, and uh, like Aman has already mentioned a lot of uh, learning resources in the previous slides. So definitely go through them if you're interested uh, in in uh, machine learning. And apart from this, like once you know all the theory, right? But you also have to practice uh, some questions, right? That uh, the type of sample questions which will be asked in the interview. So I have just put in some uh, links for the same also, and. Uh, so you can just go through that and practice the sample questions. Uh, next is a type of case studies interview. So what happens in case studies is that the interviewer will try to assess if you can actually apply your theoretical knowledge into solving real life problems. OK, so you can expect questions like how would you improve Google Maps? Right or some other things like which uh, the problems which are very relatable, but they will just try to assess that if you can actually uh, craft out creative solutions using your theoretical knowledge, right? So now these type of questions are uh, pretty complex and very open ended. OK, and you have to answer them. So there is no point blank solution that, uh, OK, you do these five steps and uh, it will just draft drastically improve. So I mean, uh, like there are some of, obviously you have to suggest some steps how to improve or like how to solve that problem, right? Like uh, if we take this example of how to improve Google Maps, right? So you, of course you'll have to give your thoughts about how do you improve it, right? But this is again a very open ended uh, uh, thing and uh, like whatever answer you give, it will have some pros and cons, right? So it is very important that how do you communicate your solution, right? And how do you structure your thoughts, think clearly? So over here, I have tried to uh, mention a sample template of how to go about answering these questions. So first is, uh, the, and the foremost important thing is, listen to the question very carefully, okay? Uh, this is like a very important aspect because the interviewer tries to assess that how attentive you are and how much attention to detail that you pay to that question right so that you understand it properly so listening is very important and then the second point is describe the product and its mission okay so once uh, you have listened to what the interviewer is saying right then you actually in your words describe what you have understood okay and then the third step is asking clarifying questions. So of course, like since this is a very open ended interview, right? So of course, uh, in what you have understood and the interviewer has told, there will be a lot of questions that might come to your mind, right? Which is very understandable because the interviewer wants you to ask the questions, right? Just to see that how deeper you are understanding stuff, right? So you, you have, you'll have to ask questions, right? Fourth point is state your assumptions. OK, so of course, like uh, because you are solving the problem and it's it's a time out, right? you may have, have just one hour, 1 1.5 hours, right? To actually give the answer to that problem. OK, and which is an open ended problem. So of course, you'll have to take in a lot of assumptions, right? Because at that time you may not have a lot of data, right? For example, if you take this question of how do you improve Google Maps? You don't have a lot of data about Google Maps ready in that interview setting, right? So you'll have to take some assumptions to solve the problem. Uh, then the fifth point is identify the pain points. So yeah, this is very important because there can be a lot of aspects uh, by which you can improve the Google Maps. But of course, you have to identify the main pain points like what you would want to improve, right? 80-20 rules, a rule works best here. So basically, if you are identifying something uh, which takes less effort, but it uh, solves 80% of the pain points. So that is like definitely preferred, right? So um, you have to identify the pain points that you are trying to solve in your approach. Uh, then the next is identify solutions to the pain points. Of course, you have to give 
like your proposed solution for that. Okay, and generally what happens is that you give various approaches to that solution, right? Approach one, two, three, and all, right? Then the next is compare the solutions through the table. So what happens is like the various approaches that you have given to solve the problem, you just evaluate the pros and cons of each of them. Okay, before arriving to the final uh, finalization that which approach you have to pick. Okay, then next is discussing the KPI. You tell what metric you are trying to improve. This is very important because in real life, uh, ultimately you have to improve some or the other metric, right? It is not just an effort based key, huh, key, like we have done these, these things and it is working fine. No, you have to define that what is actually improving, what is actually working fine now, which was not working fine earlier, right? So those KPIs you have to talk about and then summarize your solution. So this generally is a very clear way of communicating your solution. And also at the same time, it helps you bring thought clarity in your mind also, right? So it's not all over the place. It's like in a systematic manner that you are thinking and conveying the solution, right? So also I have mentioned some resources over here, which uh, uh, talk about how do you prepare about machine learning case study interviews. Um, next is system design. Okay. So this is also one category of interview. Some companies may take this round. Some company may not take this round totally up to the discretion of the company and depending on what expectation they have from the candidate. So uh, basically this round is generally about uh, the interviewer assessing if the candidate is able to think about end to end scalable system, right? Uh, for solving the underlying problem. Okay. So there might be a lot of questions asked about different components like front end design, load balancer, database sharding, caching, proxies, SQL APIs. I've just written some examples over here. Okay, this round is not related to directly just the machine learning uh, theoretical knowledge. This is around the system design knowledge. But again, like depending on the expectation the company has from the candidates and because like this is something which the candidates also learn in college, right? So companies also ask such questions on this. So again, I have mentioned some resources over here. So again, like this is uh, like very time bound session, right? That we have right now. So I'll not be able to go deep dive into each of the topics, but for that I've mentioned the resources here. Uh, reading this, you'll get uh, even more detailed idea of what is exactly asked in these interviews and what can you expect out of these rounds. And uh, next, I'll talk about how to apply. Okay, so there are various ways like nowadays it is pretty easy like you can just directly go to the company's career page, right? So if you are targeting any company that you want to apply to, you can just go to the careers page and referrals through friends. Okay, so if some of your friends or family members or somebody you know is in some of the companies that you are targeting, you can ask them to refer you. Okay, and then there are various portals also which you can use to apply for machine learning jobs. So there is LinkedIn, right? You just have to go to LinkedIn, just search for machine learning engineer jobs and a lot of jobs will be listed over there. Then there is this Upwork. So Upwork is basically a freelancing uh, portal, right? So many companies, what happens is that they uh, would want you to work as a contractor with them first for a few months, one, two, three months, whatever they uh, seem is fit for that and uh, then after that they might hire full time so upwork is such a platform uh, which these companies use to actually uh, like onboard freelancers on contractual basis then there is angel list now angel list is a very popular uh, platform like using which you can actually apply to the different startups right and then there is indeed okay indeed is also a very famous job board then there is Y Combinator. So basically Y Combinator is a startup accelerator, which uh, like startup, uh, a lot of startups get uh, incubated in Y Combinator, right? So uh, like Y Combinator also manages a job board uh, wherein all these startups which are funded by Y Combinator, they actually list their uh, job postings over there. So you can just see there also. And there are like several other portals that you can explore. I've just list listed some famous ones over here. So yeah, that was it. Thank you. And uh, now if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, I think uh, the whole content might be a little overwhelming, uh, but uh, I think yes, it is. It is indeed overwhelming. It requires at least two years of hard work and effort to be able to complete this whole curriculum uh, religiously and uh, be able to reach a stage where you are employable at machine learning companies. But in India itself, you can expect good packages upwards of 20, 25 lakhs per annum easily, especially in the current market where uh, the software jobs are heating up. 
uh, a lot. There is a huge demand uh, from product com product based companies for software engineers, product managers, machine learning engineers, back end developers, full stack developers. So I mean, it will be very easy for you uh, to get a good package. And it doesn't matter which college you are from, right? Uh, uh, I don't know what is the standing of Amity University, but definitely it's a reputed university. But if there are people outside Amity as well uh, in the call, just to let them know that today most companies don't care about colleges. At least in uh, at at our startup Cogno, when we hire, we care more about the fact that is the candidate able to clear the interviews? Are they able to uh, cross uh, qualified into our uh, tests, right, and score decently? Those things matter more than uh, what is the background they come from, what is their CGPA. Uh, obviously, CGPA should not be very low. Like, we wouldn't bother uh, with a resume of a person who's a four pointer out of ten. Uh, I mean, that's too less. Four or five point pointer shows a lack of sincerity, unless there is there are explainable reasons like medical issues and all. Okay, so with this, I am really thankful to Amant and Harshita. You spared some time for us. And uh, it will be nice if next time, if you come in our campus and take the sessions offline, students will be really happy. And uh, because you know, one-to-one -one interaction that is of course uh, more promising, more graceful, and and the student they enjoy. But uh, although this session was very very important for the point of students, and uh, they learn although they are studying AI as a subject, but of course practical experience and the sharing thoughts of our industry experts. That always matters. So thank you very much, Aman and Harshita, and hope we will be in touch. Thank you so much for sparing some time.